my name is Sandra, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a developer advocate at Slack. Today we'll be going over modals, what they are, how they work, and how to build them using the Slack API. For those that aren't aware, this video is part of a Slack video series that goes over how to build Tasks app. Tasks app is the sample app built by the Slack team in order to help developers better understand our platform features and get a hold of some best practices when it comes to building apps on Slack. We've linked the introduction video of the series in the description box below, so feel free to take a look. And I do strongly recommend watching the video about global shortcuts as it will help you better understand the video today. And with that said, let's get started. At this point, you've created an app, configured its settings and permissions, and have set up a global shortcut. To recap, global shortcuts are an entry point to app functionality. The Tasks app uses a global shortcut that triggers a modal, which enables the user to create a new task. But what are modals and how do they work? Modals are also known as dialogues or pop-up boxes, which end users can engage with on Slack. Via the Slack API, modals can be triggered through interactive components such as shortcuts, buttons, or slash commands. In order to use modals, your app will need to have the interactivity toggle turned on. You can do this from your app's configuration dashboard under the interactivity and shortcut section. The next step will be to create a view. Modal views are made from a JSON payload that defines the layout of your modal. To structure views, we use blocks. Blocks are a collection of JSON key value pairs that compound to create a modal's UI. Here, I am using our Block Kit Builder tool to create the layout for our new task modal. Slack Block Kit Builder is a helpful WYSIWYG tool that helps developers create intricate message and modal interfaces. If you're not familiar with Block Kit Builder, we've linked it in the description below. Building modal interfaces can get quite complex. Another tool that helps create modals while keeping your code clean from dozens of lines of JSON is Block Builder. Block Builder is a community library we used when building Tasks app, and it took our modal payload from this to this. This library is such a valuable contribution built by someone in our Slack developer community, so make sure you check it out. Next, we'll want to make sure our modal is configured to capture data. Modals are a great tool to gather data from the end user. Use cases include filing internal support requests, conducting quick surveys or questionnaires, or in our case, creating a new task. In order to capture data using modals, you'll need to ensure you are using input blocks. These include block elements such as checkboxes, radio buttons, drop-down menus, state pickers, etc. There are five input blocks in the new task modal from Tasks app. A text input field required for the title of the task itself, a user select drop-down needed to assign the task to a user, a date picker and a time picker to give the user the option of setting a due date. Lastly, we have the submit button, which we've renamed create. If you're using input fields, you must include this button in order for your app to receive the data. To open a modal, you will need to call views.open. I go into detail about this method in the previous video, but to recap, this method requires a trigger ID that you should receive from your initial interaction payload after a user triggers your modal. Once a user fills out the fields and submits their task information, your app will receive a view submission payload to your request URL or socket mode connection, whichever you've configured. You will also have the option to update a view after the information has been submitted. 
For task app, you'll notice that we update the view to display a confirmation message letting the user know their ticket has been successfully created. Let's see what the code for all of this looks like. On the listeners-views directory, the new dash task dash modal.js file handles all the logic for when a user has filled out and submitted a modal. In this file, you'll notice we are importing the user interface directory, which contains our modal layouts, our views. There are currently three modals in that directory, the new task modal, the task created modal, and the task creation error modal. We're parsing through the view submission payload for information relevant to our next steps. For instance, we assign variables to the key values we need, including the selected title, aka the task name itself, the assigned user, selected date, and selected time. This is all information we need to store so that we can create a list of tasks later. We then add some conditional logic to ensure invalid data inputs are identified and corrected such as not selecting a time if you selected a date or selecting a date that has already passed. To push a view after we receive the view submission payload, we use the response action field with the update value and repeat the process to push a view in case the task could not be completed due to an error. When using modals, it's important to account for all kinds of different scenarios, but even more important, to secure an effortless and seamless user experience. As you can see, modals are complex and dynamic and offer numerous possibilities when it comes to developing apps on Slack. But that's it for me today. Thank you for watching. See you next time.